Some pretty interesting new reporting out of the Wall Street Journal about Attorney General Bill Barr and his uh, decision making regarding around the Hunter Biden probe. So <laughs> this is pretty interesting. <laughs> Um, Barr knew about some of these Hunter Biden probes mm -hmm. as early as the spring and really worked hard to keep this all under wraps, rightfully as he should have, <laughs> because he had a lot of awareness about the way that this could potentially impact the presidential race. Mm. Very different decision Imagine making that. from what we saw from like, you know, Loretta Comey Lynch. and Loretta yeah. Lynch and all of those the last time around. So, I mean, this really sort of flies. And he was, by the way, under tremendous pressure yes. from Republicans, from the president to do more, to go after Hunter, to talk about this more. And he really aggressively worked to make sure that the specific news about the probe that we just learned of this week did not come out until after the election. Of course, this very much flies in the face of a lot of the uh, more radical caricatures of Bill Barr. I mean, mm -hmm. we were told before the election he was going <laughs> to steal, personally yeah. steal, have the marshals yeah, the steal US the US ballot Marshall's boxes office. and oh. all of this stuff. So, I mean, look, I don't think Bill Barr is perfect. I think he's been a nefarious actor in certain instances, which we've talked about here. But this particular call, if this reporting bears out, was profoundly correct. I know he's going to get a lot of hell for it on the right. Yeah, um, yeah. From the president and, you know, all the way on down. But this was definitely the right call to keep the Hunter probe under wraps. On the other hand, the media should have been actually covering the That's substance right. of what we did know about Hunter Biden. That's so it. there you go. There did not. The media did not need to know about the FBI investigation in order to investigate these allegations as clear as hell. I Look, we had covered this I on, on this show since like 2000, June 2019, <laughs> whenever Peter Schweitzer was here. OK, so like all of the information. <laughs> is right out there. You can go and look at the interviews if you want for yourself, which is the same things we're talking about today were some of the same known allegations with public paperwork yeah. that we have seen in the last two years. So it's not a surprise. They could easily have gone and investigated this. Oh, I had all these people who are tracking the Trump Foundation and Trump's tax returns. The New York Times spent a million dollars investigating Trump's tax returns. Fine. I, I actually, I'm totally cool with it. I want that to happen. I think we should know where the president of the United States is doing with his taxes, especially if he's not going to release his tax returns. But in this case, they showed zero curiosity whatsoever. And Glenn Greenwald has this fantastic compilation. Let's throw this up there from his Substack about all of the media outlets there that peddled the Russian disinformation lie. I mean. We had interviews on CNN of so many different hosts who were being like, this has all of the hallmarks of Russian oh disinformation. God. Remember Leslie Stahl in that 60 Minutes interview interrupting the president, being like, well, there's just no evidence of anything going on. And all it does is just make them look like even bigger fools when the FBI is out, out now and it's like, yeah, we've been investigating this for two years. Oh, and it involves Jimmy Biden, Joe Biden's brother, Chinese <laughs> business dealings, money laundering, tax fraud. Tax fraud is the tip of the iceberg with these people. And it just, they've be, they be clown themselves in the way that they covered this story. It's embarrassing for them. It is completely embarrassing. And you knew at the time that there was a question of how important the story was, yeah. how significant it was. Trump didn't help himself by like, you know, going way yeah. beyond what the facts suggested. And the laptop ridiculous from hell. The way, yeah. Right, the way that he always is. But you don't have to take his cues. Like, you should look yeah. at the information, evaluate for yourself how significant this is. And, you know, it was the kind of story that we thought was important. Yes. Not, like, totally game-changing in terms of the election, but certainly worth covering, worth investigating. And so Glenn pulled some of the most egregious examples of how media outlets actually dealt with this entire story. Maybe my favorite one here was from NPR. They got a question from a reader that said, why haven't we seen any stories from NPR about the New York Post Hunter Biden story? And their response was, we don't want to waste our time on stories that are not really stories. And we don't want to mm -hmm. waste the listeners and readers time on stories that are just pure distractions. Yeah. Okay. Now we know he is being actively investigated, at least his taxes, and that there are indications about money laundering and other things as well. So not really a story, just a pure distraction, Russian disinformation. This is it, this was such an incredible, over the top, blatantly obvious attempt to cover up anything unfor you know, anything negative about Joe Biden leading into the election. And why? Because they were all terrified. Yes. 
of Trump winning again and them catching the blame for daring to report anything negative whatsoever about Joe Biden. It's just so stupid. I mean, when you really think about it, because now what they've actually doomed the country to is more of what we saw in the Clinton years and during the Obama years, because yeah. I already saw Tom Cotton out there being like, we need a special counsel um, in order to. And what are they going to say? What's what's the argument against it? Right. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have a special counsel and three years of strategic leaks to Fox and to everybody else and be blowout ratings on one side, then blowout ratings on the other, talking about how one is a partisan hit job. White House is all going to get subpoenaed. Everybody's going to spend millions of dollars on lawyers. And we're all our time is wasted on this stuff because it could have had it litigated fairly. Then it could have been properly discussed in the Department of Justice. But this is what they do. Both sides love it, it like this. I really want to emphasize that because yeah. there's judicial watch and all these people. I mean, they're doing backflips and the amount of FOIAs that they're about to spend. <laughs> and there's going to be all these donors who are like going after them from the right and the legal infrastructure on the left spins up. This is what everybody in D.C. dreams of. And it's just less time um, arguing and working towards the things that actually matter. And like I said, I think the story matters a lot, but there's a way to treat it properly. And instead, they've guaranteed a circus. Yes. That's what actually pisses me off the most. You are so yeah. correct about yeah. that because you already know exactly how this is going to play out. Yeah. The Republicans are going to completely overreach. Yeah, 100%. They're going to allege things that are like wild and mm -hmm. insane, way beyond what the facts like actually Russia. indicate. Yeah. Right. Exactly. The Democrats are going to say, Absolutely nothing not. Wrong. He did nothing yeah. wrong. Yeah. There's nothing to see here. He's innocent and pure as the driven snow. And yeah. this is just <laughs> Russian disinformation. Yes. And we're going to have to sit here and be like, actually, we hate everybody yeah. involved with this. And meanwhile, right. And this is this is how this yeah. works. Right. How do these people get away with, like, not passing stimulus checks or actually get anything mm -hmm. done? This is how they create this great grand spectacle. Yeah. They divide into teams. Right. You get your partisan cheerleaders on Fox, your partisan cheerleaders on MSNBC, and everybody like picks up their talking points and plays their assigned role. And that way there's an illusion of something happening here when actually nothing that really matters is getting done for yeah. you whatsoever. Take Ron John, Ron, Ron Johnson, who you guys know is my favorite senator. He's the <laughs> biggest libertarian and one of the biggest libertarians in the Senate, maybe aside from like Rand Paul. He's a MAGA hero in many respects because he did the Hunter Biden report. He defended Trump on Mueller and he can screw you all day long when it comes to your economic livelihood. But the base and a lot of people will be like, oh, he fought for, you know, Trump or whatever. OK, good. You know, uh, I hope it was worth it. So oh, true. Yeah. All right, more rising for you after this.